What's going on guys? I got another critique episode for you. Today I'm going to be doing leg bone anatomy. And you guys went pretty crazy with these. We got about 50 submissions. I'm not going to be able to go through all of them, especially because a lot of you guys, you know, do, do, there's similar things that people do wrong or advice that I have for you guys. So if you're watching the free video, the premium video has like 28 people who I'm going to critique, so much more in-depth information. The assignment for the leg bone anatomy was uh, a two-parter. I gave you three model photos and you had to trace the bones on top of the photo uh, with simple forms. Not the actual bone forms, but simplified forms. Things that you can remember when you're inventing or when you're doing a figure drawing. Because it's a lot harder to remember the organic forms of the bones, right? It's a lot easier to remember simple forms. Um, the other one was I gave you skelly renderings of bones and you had to just draw the same bones simplified. So the first one is a lot harder because you can't see the bones. It's real life models, people with skin and muscles covering the bones and you have to imagine what the bones look like underneath. That's harder, but it's very valuable because that's what you'll actually be doing in real life. You know, you'll, you'll have a model in front of you, have, you have to know where the bones are. I mean, you don't have to, but it, it's helpful. That's why we're studying the bones, because we want that information to inform us and to improve our drawings. So um, it's hard, but that's a very useful exercise. Uh, so the first critique is for Hyun Bin Lim. Actually really good. Uh, I'm starting with a really good one here. There's not too many issues. I do see some things and I'll, I'll talk about them, but most of your uh, anatomy is very accurate. You got them in the right spot. Perspective is pretty good on uh, generally everywhere. Down here you, uh, you made a cone for the tibia. I don't mind that too much, even though I personally I prefer boxes, uh, especially in the joints. Um, for like the shaft of the bone and the, the femur and the tibia, you can use a, a cylinder, that's fine. Um, but for the joint areas, those areas are really good to show structure and um, cylinders aren't the best at showing structure. Boxes are much better at that because you can see the different planes. Um, so you can see if something's facing a little bit away from you or towards you. With a cylinder, you can't. You rotate a cylinder and it's the same doesn't show you which way it's facing. Only the tilt of the cylinder uh, shows you its direction. So boxes are much more useful for that. Um, like I said, especially in the joints, like the ankle is a joint, the knee is a joint. So like right here, see how you kind of made this front plane of the, the top of the tibia? You rounded that out. I would have made that into a box, the whole thing. Um, because it would help me with the perspective. And this knee that you drew here is actually one that I'm going to focus on a little bit and show you how to do it correctly because this whole thing is a little broken. The tibia is pointing a little bit towards us, not as much as I drew here, but you know, more like this. And then the femur is pointing a lot more forward towards the side. They're kind of twisted. And you're not going to get that much twisting between the femur and the tibia. There's a little bit, but not that much. That, that's broken, that's a broken knee. And I feel like that's just because you weren't thinking of the angles of the boxes, um, and that will help you. Before I go on to that little demo that I'm gonna do, I wanna mention in here, this little cylinder, this little, the, the circle that you put in here for the, the condyle shape, it's a little bit too small overall this whole form that the head of the femur should be larger just a, maybe a little bit larger and then the ball would be like that much bigger and then it's kind of an S curve through there and the other thing with this one is that you're kind of pointing the patellas up a little bit and they're not they wouldn't do that there's a, a ligament connecting the patella to the tibia in here, which keeps it in place. It's fixed to the tibia. You know, this is a common thing, people, there's a common misperception, mis misconception um, about the placement of the, the patella is that they kind of move up with the femur, but they, they really don't. Um, it can go in 
it can kind of go in and out, but it's not going to tilt that much. So if I zoom in a little bit, I would keep this patella right there, pointing straight, fixed to this bone here. Okay, so I'm going to zoom into this drawing now and show you uh, why I like boxes so much. It's going to help you keep all your perspective in place. And the thing about boxes is it's the first thing you probably learn when you're learning perspective, right? It's, it's like perspective 101. And it's the, one of the easiest things to learn about perspective. And so once you know how to draw a box, it becomes very powerful. You can check so much of your stuff with just boxes. Um, you can keep a lot of your drawing in perspective, keep things aligned. Um, and I'm going to show you a few different applications of it here. So one thing uh, that I like to do when I'm drawing joints is start with an area that can be simplified to a box. Right? With this one, the, the thing I think you guys are struggling with the most was the top platform of the tibia. So I'm starting with the top plane of that box. We're looking down at it quite a bit. And then it's got some depth. Notice how I'm grouping my lines. So these vertical lines, they're all parallel. And then you got these three lines, they're parallel. And then you got these three lines, they're parallel. So you got three groups of three lines going to a vanishing point. This box that I've established will now help me keep the rest of this knee in perspective. Because when I put the femur on top of this platform, it should be in the same perspective. Yours is not, because look at, you see this back edge of the tibia? That's what you've identified here with that edge. But then the front edge of the femur, it should be parallel, right? I mean, it, it's kind of just sitting right on top of it. Should be parallel to this front edge, but it's not. You're tracking them into very different vanishing points, which makes them look like they're twisted and broken. If I had established a box somewhere in there, I would naturally just have a guide for myself for everything I put around it. So let's say I want to put uh, a cylinder on top of that box, which is kind of like the condyles. Um, I have the axis of that cylinder. I know the ellipse is going to be perpendicular to that. Yeah, it looks about right. And then the front edge of that cylinder goes to the same vanishing point. It's going to be or parallel to, the, to that box. Same thing on the top. And then I can cap it off on the other side. So there's my cylinder for the condyle, condyles. And then I know that the form of the condyles is a little bit, uh, it's got like another little arc coming off of it. And that's a more, you know, anatomical thing here that we learned in the leg bones lesson. So I'm going to bring that out, and then that is the rest of the femur. That connects to the shaft of the femur. And that just keeps going all the way to the hip. Also, notice how I'm drawing through the forms. It's like, it's like there's x-ray vision here. Everything is transparent, and I can see through it. You're not doing that, and so because you're drawing only the, little, the edges that you're seeing, you're not connecting all the, all the edges. If you draw through the form and you draw the entire form, it's a lot easier to keep everything connected, um, everything where it needs to be. For example, when I drew the end of that cylinder on the other, on the other side, I made sure it ends right where the, the box of the top of the tibia ends. But if, if you didn't even define that back edge, you wouldn't know where to put that end cap. This is all digital, so if you got all these construction lines and then you're doing a, you know, a longer illustration, you can put another layer on top, clean it up, you put good line quality on top of it, and you'll, you're fine. But when you're doing the, you know, these anatomy studies, don't worry about keeping everything so perfect, or not perfect, but clean. You, you can have all your construction lines show through, and it's actually more useful for the instructor to see how you're constructing that stuff in the back. So 
there's that. And then the patella that I put on top, you didn't put it on there, but there's a patella that, like I just mentioned earlier, rests or is fixed to the tibia. And so if the point sits right in the middle in here, you got a little triangle. And then there's the front plane. And notice this, these, the front plane, I'm going in this direction. That's because I've already established these angles. Those are the top planes. If I wasn't specific about that, if I didn't have a box, it would be a lot harder for me to put that patella in the right spot. And then the top edge, and then you got your depth. And I also have the depth lines figured out. So I make sure that they're parallel. And there's kind of a, a very simplified form of the patella. If I wanted to clean that up because it's getting a little messy, I could put a layer on top. Usually, if you look at my the drawings that I was doing for the uh, assignment examples, the, the lines in the back, the ones that you kind of see through x-ray vision, um, I usually do those a lot lighter so they don't get in the way, but I can still see them in order to help me construct everything. Um, I just went full dark on every line here just to kind of show you guys every line, but when I'm drawing these, I am keeping them uh, faded back. You know, they don't have to pop out. Um, but let's, let's clean this up real quick. To see how just fading those lines back a little bit, those red lines, and then having my the visible planes a little bit darker. Now it's a little bit more clear of what's happening, but I still have my construction lines underneath that I want to show when I'm submitting my assignment to, to, for people to critique, to look at. It's a lot easier for people to critique your stuff if they could see your entire thought process. But honestly, I don't think you, you constructed them in the first place, because if you did, you would have these guides and all your angles would be in check. You, you'd be able to, to see everything, keep everything parallel. So that's really the power of boxes. Not everything I drew here is a box, but the box helped me draw everything else because there's lines that have to converge to the same vanishing point when things are parallel. Uh, well, thank you guys for submitting your assignments. That was a lot. I'm so glad there's so many of you guys participating and finding use in these lessons. If you're watching the free version, there's a lot more in premium. Go check it out. Um, I'm sure you've heard that ad several times now. Um, but there really is a lot more stuff. For you premium people, thank you so much. Thank you for the support. Next up is, is butt. So I'll, I'll see you in the butt. <laughs> see you guys.